Good morning, everyone. So um, I thought that I'd try something a little different this year. So every year in January, we do a studio tour and the studio is not big, so it doesn't take very long, but to sort of show how things are organized, what we might be working on, what we finished on. And so I just wanted to try it on Twitch instead and see how that would go. So this is the 2021 studio tour. So. so this is our basement stowing studio. And we start out as walking in the doorway. You can see the, uh, the place where you do in-person gaming when there's not a pandemic. And so we've got some artwork on the walls, which is always fun. Um, very important poster about keeping calm and sewing on. Absolutely. And uh, so then we have a lot of shelves of storage. This is in the basement. It's a converted bedroom. So that's pretty nice. I have a lot of space to work in. So we've got some pattern storage in these fancy pattern boxes. Although clearly these plastic bags also patterns. So there's a little bit of work to do in organizing those. Uh, I have some containers. I, I love to organize. So being able to sort of keep things straight. And yes, I have enough shoulder pads in my fabric stash to warrant their own box. Uh, we've got some heat and bond, which is a, a fusible interfacing to make things stick together when you're sewing. And a lot of copper rods that I use for various craft projects. We've got the container here with this is one of my two uh project containers so we'll someday do some fallout cosplay and uh, i'm pretty partial to the nuka girl so that will probably be what i do also got some um some padding for quilting and for other things down here at the bottom plus some freeform stuff there some uh some freeform batting for like stuffed animals that sort of thing up at the top is a lot of the foam storage. I'm pretty short, so I don't do a whole lot of foam work, so that stays up at the top. Plus, I've got some backup bottles, and you should always keep your mannequin heads where you can keep an eye on them while well, they're keeping an eye on you. We've got our fabric storage, we've got our stretchy materials, and then our non-stretchy materials, and more. So this is the fabric that we normally use for our... Um, or witch dresses and hats, so it gets its own special place. Uh, we've also got a box for electric components when we're doing LED stuff and things of that nature. And then we've got, of course, our uh, frosted potion bottles down here and more scraps of uh, foam and also some Wonderflex and Warbler down there as well. And then over here, we've got some wig supplies and some elastic. And uh, especially making the, the masks, the face masks and the sleep masks require a lot of elastic. So I always like to have extra on hand. As you can see, I've got two, two rolls. So there you go. Um, and then this is our trim and our findings. Findings are things like bells or uh, tassels or little extra bits that you would attach onto clothes. And that is slightly different from trim. Trim is like ribbons and, and things like that. They're very closely related. So uh, I've also got more trim and those are longer pieces and things like I've got a metallic belt in there, um, more elastic, and then some sewing tools like my grommet maker and things like that. Got my Dremel down here and have my spare serger because you should always have a spare. We have a little bit of costume storage in here. Most of it is in another room and spare sewing machine. And very excited about this little stool right here. Uh, this is a new addition from last year. My grandfather was uh, an artist, a German impressionist, and he made that to, uh, he made that for me when I was very small. And so I used to stand on this tiny stool and help him with his etching presses and whatever else he was doing. And then, the the main attraction which is the sewing table and this is uh 
sewing machine, the serger. I have a nice view of the backyard. It's been raining here in Georgia. So our backyard pond is looking pretty healthy. And uh, so it's a nice, especially in the, uh, in the springtime when there are lots of birds and, and small critters running around. There are two of our fancy dress forms and more fabric storage because of course there's more fabric storage. Also my books, my sewing books for uh, creating fashion and how to make patterns, things like that. And then this is the LEDs for our fire props. And some of the extra ribbon is down there on the bottom. And then some fun fabrics that are not necessarily Geek Forge related, but if I wanna make myself something, that that's where those live. Another new addition for 2021 is the projector, which I'm very excited about. So this projector will project patterns directly onto my cutting surface, which I probably need a new one because it's also my painting surface and my Dremel surface and everything else. So it's seen a lot of love. This is, it's a cardboard thing that I trimmed up to be the width of the table. And so I can cut directly onto the, the cutting table without having to cut out paper patterns first. So I'm very excited about that. And I think that that'll save me a great deal of time and help control my pattern storage problem because then I can just store them on the cloud instead. I've got my ironing board and my whiteboard for when I'm doing working in projects and I've got a list of those. And then we've got bobbins and sewing box, various scissors, because you always need scissors. And of course, heat gun for working with foam, very important. And then I've got regular thread and embroidery thread and there's the embroidery machine. I've got a uh, the Lewis bunny hat that I was kind of prototyping that has sat here for a year. So I might get back to work on that. And then my other uh, project box, this is the cyber arm that I was working on last year, if y'all remember, and that I did a foam prototype and then was working on a 3D print instead to make it thinner. And of course we didn't go to Gen Con in person this year. They actually didn't have it in person or this past year. And so, uh, that gives me another year to finish working on that. And uh, some artwork from some friends and some more artwork because I love artwork in my creative spaces. So this is the, the third mannequin because I can't have too many. Then I've got my top shelf, which is my glues and adhesives. So just about everything covered. And I had to go over into the other section for my spray adhesive because the bottle was too tall. And I've got resins and paint and some foam clay. And then I've got some other uh, plastic pieces that I'm working on prototyping, looking at potentially dyeing a face shield, different colors, and um, maybe doing something with handheld globes to expand our LED glowy line. And tapes, spike tape, gaff tape, and two types of masking tape, because you can never have too many tapes. You never know what you're gonna need. I've got two irons one that's a big boy iron and one that's a mini iron that you usually take to like hotels and stuff, but works really well when I'm trying to get into really small corners in sewing projects. Then I've got some more, uh, this is where all the other lights are that are not for fire props. So the ones we use for our LED cubes and for our potion bottles all live over here. And uh, the magnets are hiding out in the very back because I don't know where to keep them where they won't interfere with everything else that I own. And I've got my airbrush and some Dremel extensions. I have some things for the embroidery machine, which is right over there. Uh, the, the hoops, there's a hat hoop, which I still have yet to master, but one day I'll figure it out. As well as the, uh, the backing and the materials for making patches some more foam. Uh, this is mostly that craft foam foamies kind of deal. So they're very thin and a lot of different colors. And then uh, some more fabric storage. This is mostly scraps and smaller pieces. So I cut out a bunch of fabric for uh, masks and the uh, so they all go in there. So I have them in one place. And that is the studio. So yeah, it's it is not a large studio, but it's large enough for what we need. And that that turns out pretty well. Uh, it's Mike 420, it's like 35 degrees outside. So maybe another day. <coughs> 
Also, there's this uh, because I have lots of art in my family, so I like to keep it around. It was actually done by my great-grandfather in uh, 1914 that he did this piece in, um, I guess it's London. It looks like London. Um, so that is up there in a place of honor, which is cool. And my gumball machine, which keeps my random buttons because I use my, uh, so my grandmother bequested me, bequested, bequeathed me a tobacco canister instead of a cookie canister. And of course we all know that those cookie canisters don't actually have cookies in them. So this has buttons that I use on a daily basis and all of those that were in there are now in my little gumball machine, which is not really um, useful if you need it in a hurry, but I do try, especially when I'm making things for myself, to include at least one thing that was in my grandmother's sewing stash because she had a lot of stuff. So it's either the buttons or it is, um, there's some binding and some edging that was from her sewing kit. And the red tomato is, was hers. Um, so I try and incorporate something like that in each of the costumes that I make, especially for myself. So yeah, that is studio tour and a little bit of extra that maybe you did or didn't want to know, but I shared anyway. Um, so this year is because of everything that's going on. The, uh, the need for cosplay related materials are down a little bit. We are selling um, patterns on our Etsy site, uh, some of those uh, vintage style patterns. So things from the early 2000s, early 2010s, especially that are costume related. And so we're doing that. And we are looking at some extra, you know, LED and plastic sort of things. Um, we are still making face masks. We did just release a line of winter themes that are pretty fun. And that, um, yeah, so we're thinking of additional things that we might be able to offer. Uh, I did just finish my large commission from last year. It actually took me almost an entire year to, to finish it, uh, which was the Marvin the Martian project that I was working on. And so hopefully we'll have some pictures from the customer soon of her wearing it. And we learned a whole bunch about that. So we may be opening commissions back up soon. Uh, I might take a little bit more of a break and maybe, maybe looking at uh, end of February to officially open up commissions. I have a couple other projects I want to finish up first. So if you want to know about when we are opening up commissions, you can go to our website, thegeekforge.org, and there is a place to sign up for our email list. And we will post on our Facebook and our Instagram. Uh, Facebook is The Geek Forge. Instagram is at Geek Forge. And our Twitter is The Geek Forge as well. So we try to keep it as consistent as possible for y'all. So that is really about it. Um, I don't know if there are anything else. Anything else that's exciting. Uh, I do have my TV in the studio to help me with any tutorials that I may need to look up. So there is that as well. And uh, hula hoops, very important for uh, sizing. I actually do use them um, when I'm looking for perspective and trying to figure out how big things are because it is mostly a circle. So yeah, that is it. Uh, thank you for coming to the studio tour. And I look forward to an awesome 2021 uh, with you and everyone else. So I hope everyone has a good day and we will talk to you later. Bye.